Hi, I'm Jonathan and this is Finney's TV. In this episode, I'll demonstrate how to create a model in LDD derived from a 3D shape. First step in creating a model using this method is to find some 3D or lifelike images of one you want to create. In this example, I'll be using Tarantula, which is my current build project. I use Google Images to find either 3D models or lifelike images at different angles of what I want to recreate. The final model needs to be broken down into smaller pieces to make it manageable. This not only applies to this method, but to other methods as well. For example, Trojan Horse Mark II, which I took to Brick Bench in 2018, split into numerous parts, including the legs, torso and head. The, the horse torso, or horso as I like to call it, uh, was broken down further into the bottom, front, rear, top and sides. The ladybird shell and head were also broken down into different pieces, despite using a completely different method of design. As you can see, the tarantula has two main components head and the body. The legs will be designed at a later stage. For now we'll focus on designing the body and use the same method to design the head as well and combine them at the end. Once we have an idea of what we want, we can use a voxel generator to give us an overview of what the final model is going to look like. I use the voxel sphere generator by Orange. A link is available in the description. Although it's designed for Minecraft and other things, I find it quite handy for creating LEGO models. While this is an easy to use generator and provides step by step instructions, there is the limitation the tool cannot save what you have generated. I get around this by taking a screen capture video, slowly walks through each step. I can rewatch the video and pause it as I need to while designing in LDD. To do this, I use Cam Studio, which is free software. Another thing I've done is taken a screenshot of the Bezier Curve settings. The only caveat with this is I'll probably never get 100% match to what I've created before, so this is probably more suitable for deriving new models. The first thing you'll see is there are a number of different voxels you can generate. Today we're interested in the Bezier Curve voxel, though you can play around and see which one suits you best. The next step is we set the dimensions. The first thing we do is unlock the ratios, unless we want a ball. Then we can enter the width and depth in studs. The beauty of this tool is you can set the height to a particular number when using bricks, which won't have as much detail, or you can triple the height and use plates to get a similar shape but with more detail. Once we have our dimensions, we can warp the model using the controls that popped up when we chose the Bezier Curve voxel shape. I'll make adjustments here based on my original settings. When we're done, we can scroll down, see the layers required to recreate this model in LEGO Digital Designer. Each layer is either a brick or a plate, depending on the level of detail you want. Depending on the voxel, you may need to look a few layers in before you see anything. You can then expand each layer to see differences between them. I've opted to create a symmetrical model so I'll only be scrolling down to where the model starts to get smaller again, which is around halfway. Next, we go to LDD and start creating layers based on the voxel we generated. For each layer, count the number of squares going along the edges to ensure your LDD model and the voxel are identical. This is probably not the best example, as I've regenerated this voxel since my original design. I use a different colour for the layers. This makes editing easier and allows layer by layer mirror image to be easily created using the colour selection tool. As I step through the layers, you can see how they overlap. It's important parts interconnect properly between layers for maximum strength. Worst case, if something does fall apart when you build it, you can always modify the design. One step I like to do but this is completely optional, is a 3D rendering to see what the final product will look like. I use Blue Render, which is an open source Java based renderer. There are a couple of minor things when using Blue Render. The first is that you need to close LDD when using Blue Render. Secondly, you need to ensure the camera angle is good in LDD before you save, as this is the angle used by Blue Render. 
To verify that the camera angle is good and that I can see the whole model, I do a wireframe render first, as it's a lot quicker than a full render. If you wanted to, you could also do multiple angles to get a 360 degree view of the model. The next step is to combine your models in LDD. This can be done by opening a model and then going to File, Import Model, which can then allow you to replace subsequent models. I remove some layers and change some parts in order to get the final product. Having layers in different colours made the model easier to work with. I can use LDD Extended Mode to make the model a single colour before I export the parts list. When you're done, you can either export directly to BrickLink and place an order, or export in the LDRAW format and import that into BrickStock. BrickStock gives a rough estimate of the cost and weight of your model. This allows you to modify the part quantities so you don't buy parts you already have. Well, that's it for this episode, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions or comments or you'd like to see something in an upcoming episode, please leave a comment below.